<coughs> oh, uh, are we on? Okay. We're back with Lifestyles of the Weird and Obscure, and we're live in the wilds of Arkansas, where we'll be interviewing the world's oldest man. Sir? Eh? <sighs> what year is it? Hey, get that camera out of my face. Sir, can you tell us the secret of your longevity? Outpost. Sorry? I'm not kicking the bucket until I get to see the version 1.5 upgrade for Outpost. But they released that in July. They what? Dad, burn it. Why didn't somebody wake me up? I've got a copy right here. I'll just boot her up. So what's up with this upgrade? Do they, do they stick in all this stuff they said would be in the original release? Yes, actually, they did. Trucks? Yep. Monorail? Uh-huh. Trade with the rebel colony? Multiple colonies? AI macro management? Absolutely. So tell me about the features the upgrade adds. Okay, the first and most obvious one is trucking. For players who like to micromanage transportation of materials, you can set the trucking to manual. What's that do? You have to set up trucks to move materials from the mines to the smelter. You set the routes the trucks take and build roads to speed things up. Do you get to see the little trucks driving around? Uh, no. Bummer. Well, if trucking isn't fast enough for you, you can build a monorail. Bigger, faster truck with a fixed route? Basically. Do you get to see it zipping along the track? Well... Major bummer. Remember the Rebel Colony? Well, the great news is you can now establish diplomatic contact with them. Once that's accomplished, you can set up a trade agreement, then trade resources with them. Say, wouldn't it have been better if you could ask for what you needed and then dicker for what they were willing to offer in exchange? You can also assign an AI to micromanage aspects of your colony once you've developed the technology. Unfortunately, it only handles building. If you've got an AI assigned to, say, subsurface research, it will build lots of labs, but you still have to set what those labs are working on. Do you get to see it think? Uh... That's a joke, son. Oh, one of the coolest features they added was the ability to build new colonies. Once you've accumulated enough resources, you get a command center tile in the tile picker. You can then place it at least 60 tiles away from your primary colony, build a few support structures and transfer some people, and you've got a functioning second colony. You can also take control of the Rebel Colony and build structures in orbit. So, as you can see, Outpost is now complete. Hmm. How about that male AI voice? Greetings, Commander. Welcome to the Virtual Command Environment. I'm the Artificial Intelligence who will be assisting you. That make it? Uh, no. Or did they do anything about that silly pin the tail on the donkey method of picking which planet you travel to? Uh... Is there a crime report? Specific details about why Colin and Sir Diane to help you pinpoint a solution. How about warning messages when you're doing something stupid, like pumping refined minerals all over the ground because you haven't built a doggone storage tank? Well, no, but... But nothing. What you're telling me is that even though they've added a whole mess of new features, the game still has some shortcomings, right? Look, why are we arguing about this? Outpost is a great looking game, it's a great premise, and with the upgrade, the gameplay is way better than it was before. Yeah, but it could be even better. But it's good now. Not as good as it ought to be! Well, that's that. I've seen Outpost 1.5, so I might as well look for a bridge to throw myself off. Wait, don't give up hope yet. There's going to be a sequel. A what? A sequel, and it's being designed by Gentry Lee, the co-author of Rama 2 with Arthur C. Clarke. In fact, we'll be talking with Lee about the sequel in an upcoming episode of IE, uh, uh Lifestyle. <sighs> All right. Wake me up when it gets here.